I've been building a lot of drawers lately, and with drawers comes drawer fronts. I decided I wanted to add a bevel to the drawer fronts for my kitchen project, and to do that, I wanted to make a simple jig that would hold the board while I passed it over my table saw. While designing this thing in my head, I realized I would have a second side available that I could set up for a completely different use. So here's a simple jig with multiple uses, killing two birds with one stone. Let's see how I did it. Uh, did it as in made the jig, not uh, how I threw rocks at birds. Starting with some old plywood that I trusted to be flat enough, I cut out the pieces I would need at the table saw. This plywood actually used to be old doors from a different cabinet I already destroyed. It's the circle of life. I put one of the skinny pieces flat on top of the table saw fence with a bigger panel perpendicular to it, then traced a line along that edge to indicate where these boards would intersect. Then I used that line to help me set up the fence at my drill press so I could drill easily repeatable pilot holes. I set the depth stop on the drill to make sure my screw heads would end up just below the surface, then drilled four holes in each end of both panels. The spacing of those holes doesn't matter much, so I could just eyeball it on the fly. Back on the table saw fence, I clamped the skinny piece to the panel to hold things in perfect alignment, then ran in a few screws. You might notice that the plywood split here. I should have transferred the pilot holes through the panel into the skinny piece first. But I was in a hurry, and for what this jig needs to do, it doesn't hurt anything, it just hurts my feelings. Since I'm right-handed and it's easier to work from this side, I flipped the jig around, clamped on the second panel, and ran in more screws. Next I flipped the jig upside down, then slid it back over the fence with the second skinny piece in place. This allowed me to exactly mirror the spacing from the other end without having to think very hard about it. Then a few more screws and the body of this was all done. Now I was in a hurry to get this jig to this stage of completion because I needed it to work on a project. I needed to put bevels on the drawer faces um, for a kitchen cabinet project that I was doing. And I'll leave a link to that in case you want to see it. We'll make it easy to find. Um, so I had plans to take it further than this, but I stopped here because I just needed to get it in use. Now to use it at this point, I would just take, here's my fake drawer front, set it up against the board, clamp it all the way across the jig to the board, across the back, and across the front. So it's just held firmly like that, and then it would slide along the fence. Now, I'm for better lighting, I'm showing you on the wrong side of the blade, so I would actually be using it like this and sliding it across that angled blade. For this purpose, I'm just gonna show you over here. Um, now this works really well for beveling the long edges of this, but what becomes an issue is trying to bevel the short edge. You can't get a clamp to reach that board from either side. So what I ended up doing was clamping it from the back end, but you can see if this thing was even slightly bowed, it would pull it out a little bit like that, and that would make this angle come off so your corners wouldn't look quite right. You'd have less here and more here or vice versa. Um, anyway, so my plan to fix that going forward, because I'm going to do a whole kitchen worth of cabinets and drawer faces and stuff, is to make it easier to clamp to this. And to do that, I'm going to take these um, quick little micro jig F-style clamps that are designed to slide into a dovetail groove. And I'm just going to take this over to the router and run a couple of dovetail grooves along uh, the face of this in both directions and get it so it's really easy to just clamp anything I need to up against it, make it easy to use and really safe and hands-free at that point, keep your fingers away from the blades. So over to the router table, we'll get that done and then I'll show you what we're going to do on the back side of this thing. After a couple passes over the router table to cut the dovetail grooves, I tested the jig on the table saw again and found it was a lot easier to clamp the workpiece to the jig using this method. Since my old spline jig was built for a job site table saw, I decided that the back side of this thing was the perfect canvas to paint my new one on. But I have no talent for paint, so instead I went through with actually building it. I found center at the bottom edge, then used a speed square to draw lines from that point out to the front and back edges at 45 degree angles. Then I grabbed a straight piece of scrap wood and cut two pieces with 45 degree miters on each end. I put CA glue on the jig and sprayed accelerator on the block of wood, then I carefully lined up the leading corner with the pencil line and carefully rolled it back until it was sitting flat in the perfect position. 
I took my biggest framing square, butted it up against the first block, and clamped it in place. Then I added more CA glue and accelerator and used the square as a positive stop to push the corner of the second block against before rolling it down into position on top of the glue. The last step was to drill a few pilot holes in each block and run screws through them. Notice how the bottom screws are still a long ways from the bottom edge? This leaves plenty of space for the table saw blade to come up through the wood without worrying about hitting those screws. This jig is going to really come in handy for me. With the ability to cut all these bevels and splines quickly, accurately, and safely, it's going to be a real time saver. You can see here how adding bevels to drawer faces can add a nice decorative touch, or how adding splines to the corners of a picture frame can add a decorative touch and make it stronger all at the same time. Well everybody, that's about all for this one. I really appreciate you watching this and I hope you got something useful out of it. If you wouldn't mind hitting that like and subscribe button, it would really help me out, and then you'll be one of the first to know the next time I upload a video. I think that's about all I've got to say this time guys, so thanks a lot, and we'll see you next time.